Uh, brilliant. Right. Well, I will. Uh, I'll get going then. Uh, <laughs> a little bit early. Uh, so uh, my title, uh, project title is Leak Vision, and uh, yeah, thank you for thank you for watching. I'm a little bit nervous, so hopefully you'll excuse the nerves as I slowly warm up. Um, so give us a little background about myself. Uh, my name is Ollie Martin. I'm a recent electronic engineering graduate from the University of York. Um, I've been in the role of graduate project engineer at Cinovate up in Harrogate since July 2020, so just over nine months. Uh, Cinovate is the research and development business for Synthetech. Uh, the project is being developed by a small tight-knit team, which has allowed me to be involved with a really wide range of different project aspects. Um, I've been leading on electronic design and sensor specification, uh, as well as being involved with testing, research development, documentation, and um, external stakeholder presentations, which I assume this counts as one. <laughs> so I'm um, going to do a project introduction. Uh, so what is Leak Vision? Leak Vision combines thermal imaging and advanced image processing technology to provide a traffic light system for detecting and analyzing pipeline leaks. So the challenge we're trying to address, um, we can split into three core key areas. So A, is the pipe leaking? B, how big and where is the leak? And C, are the pipes deteriorating over time? So the aim of leak vision uh, is to find those things uh, and to reduce digging associated with locating and repairing uh, leakages by minimizing disruption, time and cost. Um, we've all been aware of sections of road you know, throughout the country that are seemingly dug up several times a year, every year for 10 years on gas leaks uh, without ever really properly repairing the leak. Um, so Leak Vision aims to give networks uh, a tool that can be far more targeted and efficient than ever before with their repair. Um, the technology is being developed closely with Northern Gas Networks and the Engine, uh, Energy Innovation Centre. So I'm going to give you a bit of an overview on the actual core technology now. So uh, the core uh, Leak Vision is a sensor package made up of a thermal camera and a specially designed heater uh, with some additional supporting sensors around it. So the principle is uh, we use a thermal camera, so obviously thermal cameras detect heat, not light. Um, we take a cold picture, so we take a picture of the pipe at an ambient temperature, which is around five to eight degrees. Then we use our heater and we switch our heater on and that warms up the, uh, the gas in the pipe uh, and we take a warm picture of the pipe. We then combine these two images to create a hybrid image. So what we're looking for between these two images is a small change in the temperature around a potential defect. Um, so as warm gas escapes out of a defect, uh, it warms the defect boundaries proportionally to the flow rate. So what I'm saying is, is warm gas goes through a crack or a defect and warms the edge of this defect more than the rest of the pipe. So what we see is a, a, a change in temperature when we turn on our heater. So we take our two images and we combine them into a hybrid image. This is a bit like uh, HDR mode on a um, on the iPhone. Um, so that's a high dynamic range. And what that does is it takes several different contrast level images. So you take a very low contrast image for your darks and a high contrast image for your lights and you combine them to give you an image that's kind of better than any of the individual images you took. Um, so not only can we use leak vision here to detect uh, leaks, so you see here we've got a, a couple of thermal images here that have been through our processing system. So we have a one millimeter wide uh, longitudinal crack and you see that hot spot around the edge of the crack and the same with the pinhole on the right. Um, we can also defer flow rate by looking at what the temperature of the defect was, uh, an ambient temperature, and then what the temperature of the defect is at uh, a warmed temperature. And then because the uh, Thinking about how the, how the temperature has changed over time allows us to defer the flow rate, which is obviously something you just can't do with a normal camera. Uh, if there were any questions about what this, this is on the previous slide, I'll just show you the, these strange whiskers that come off the robot. Um, they're not just decoration. Uh, they're there to give a, they're 3D sensors effectively for um, detecting temperature in the pipe. So what we, what we want is when we turn on our heater, we want that warm front of air to mix really nicely around the sensor. And so these little kind of whiskers uh, allow us to uh, see what, you know, see how well that is mixed and we can adjust this, that sensor and the heater accordingly. 
So onto platforms for leak vision. So as I said, it's a sensor package, um, but it can be mounted on a range of different systems. Uh, so primarily we have a push rod. So for gas, there are stapling gas. Generally, it's a long, stiffish wire with a camera on the front of it or a microphone in some cases, and they're fed down off a reel into a pipe through a small hole. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're using a thermal camera rather than a normal camera. Because these smaller mains are generally higher pressure, we actually don't need to use a heater because we have this thing called the Joule Thompson cooling effect, where if you imagine uh, a crack in a window or you know a draft in a house, around that is cooler and there's higher pressure. It, we can actually just use the thermal camera to see where uh, the gas is escaping out of the crack and creating uh, cooling. Also have the uh, robotic crawler system, uh, which is kind of the main focus of the presentation. Um, it's for a larger diameter mains at lower pressure. So these start from about 10 inches and this really depends on how we can get the robot into the pipe. Uh, and this can go up to you know 48 inch or however the largest pipe you can find me is. Um, and this has a range of uh, between 100 and 200 meters from both directions. So it could add up, up to 400 meters of uh, scanning territory. And this uses a fixed axis camera and a heater which can be positioned, you see on in the robot image there, up and down in the center of the pipe, uh, depending on the size of the pipe, obviously, and allowing us to get a really good mix of temperature around the robot. Uh, a range of interchangeable lenses will allow us to change the field of view of the thermal camera. So in a smaller pipe, you want a shorter field of view, but in a larger pipe, you can have a larger field of view. And this means we can avoid having to use pan and tilt uh, you know additional sensors on the robot to look around we can just keep it still and look at the hole outside of the pipe the heater is configured to achieve the most efficient mixing available using adjustable gas manifolds so we can control how the heat diffuses out of the uh, uh, out of the heater uh, yeah so a little bit more detail on the robotic crawl system so synthetech uh, developed several robotic crawlers over the years. Um, Synthetrax is the platform, and these have been used quite effectively in the network for CCTV cameras for many years now, uh, and seem to be very popular. Um, we also use it as a for STAS, which is a product which sprays uh, flex spray or main spray around the inside of the pipe, which is a sticky uh, material that can help seal cracks. Uh, and we're envisaging that this product and leak vision will be a really iconic duo because you can go in, you can look for a leak, you can spray it, and then you go in and have another look and see if it's still leaking. Uh, and so on the robot, we have, as I said, thermal camera, heater, an array of sensors, uh, a flow sensor, a normal camera as well, so that the robot can double up as just a simple imaging system, uh, as well as meterage. So this allows us to work out where the robot is in the pipe relative to the data we're collecting. So talking about the heater design, um, we need the heater to be as efficient as possible for two reasons. I mean, efficiency is always good, but <laughs> um, the first reason is to make the most of the power we're getting down the cable. So obviously this is a 200 meter long reel uh, and inherently because of Ohm's law, um, you know, harking back to GCC uh, physics, you inherently lose some power out of the cable the longer it is. Um, so we want to make sure that we use kind of every watt and joule that's available to us at the heater. The second reason we want to keep the heater as efficient as possible is because we want to stay well within the uh, 2.9 minimum safety factor required under ATEX. The flash point of gas is 550, uh, natural gas is 550 degrees C. So we want to stay way, way below that. And the way we do that is by having a really efficient uh, Get heat exchanger inside the in the heater so that we don't, our heating element doesn't need to heat up that much to generate as much change in temperature. We've been using some um, quite sophisticated uh, thermal finite element analysis models to uh, refine the design to be as efficient as possible. Um, and the important thing to remember is we're really only looking to create a temperature change of a few degrees, maybe five degrees at the crack boundary. So from you know if the ambient temperature is eight degrees up to thirteen degrees. So barely a cold day, you know. Yeah, so talking about testing and validation next. Uh, so we did some lots of preliminary testing and then we did some third party validation work with a leading Cambridge based technology consultancy firm. 
And what they did for us was they carried out some theoretical analysis, uh, a lot of hard number crunching, um, some fluid dynamics modeling of the concept, and also compared this to some physical testing. So in the images here, you'll see uh, this rig we sent them. And what the rig does is creates, simulates the conditions in a very long section of pipe, but in a short section of pipe. Um, because of COVID, uh, it made it increasingly difficult for us to get down and work with uh, the team. So we had to find this innovative solution. So what we've done here is using these kind of conical waveguides, created laminar flow in a really short section of pipe, which uh, is we, they really enjoyed and we've really pushed. I think this is something that we'll be using a lot more in future. Uh, Yeah, so what, what they did with this data is they compared it and they found a really strong correlation on some areas and, and not on others. This correlation model is how we kind of build our confidence system. So we found that leak volumetric flow rates, so how much is flowing out of the leak, pipe geometry and leak geometry were the sort of biggest contributors with a rise around the defect temperature. Um, and so this model looks at what parameters affect a change in temperature and weights them in terms of how strongly they correlate. So we're not just throwing out the weaker correlated things, we're including the model, but in a lower weighting. So in our traffic light system, we take this wide range of parameters and we reduce them down into a really simple red, orange, green. And that means, is the pipe leaking? Is it something we immediately need to look at? Or is it just leaking a tiny amount that isn't of concern? And we can use this to analyze a single leak, but these individual traffic lights per leak can then lead into a larger kind of traffic light model. So what I think everyone's picturing is like a red leak is loads of gas going out a single crack. But what happens if you have 10 very small cracks that on the surface are adding up into a red leak? So we can feed that into a model uh, and create a kind of larger analysis and traffic light system. So leak vision scans the pipe obviously and we have three different types of scanning available uh, so we have a quick scan which is what i described before we drive out with a take an ambient image of the pipe uh, and then we drive back and we take a warmed image of the pipe and we combine that to create uh, this hybrid image but doing that at periodic intervals we can create a kind of pseudo 3d map of the pipe and where we think areas of concerns might be uh, so as before, the robot could survey up to 250 meters, perhaps, of the pipe in a few hours, uh, and it can locate areas of concern, uh, looking at the sort of temperature, the pressure, and the flow rate along the whole section of the pipe. So once we've done this, we can then use full scan, which is a sort of slower and more detailed scanning process that allows us just to re you know, revisit certain areas of the pipeline. So we may go, okay, well, at 73 meters, we think there might be a leak, and then at 5, 10, and 12, there also might be some areas and we want to look at them in more detail. And again, this can keep feeding into the traffic light model. Finally, the thing that I get a bit nerdly excited about is repeat scan. So the idea of returning back to the same section of pipe over, you know, several, you know, maybe months or years and looking at how the pipe is degrading or if it's not, are the leaks we detected stable? And this really helps to feed into a larger model. So we can take this data and build it up over a period of time and build a really strong data set. So we could say, you know, after having done lots of scans of a certain type of cast iron main, we can go, well, we've seen this type of crack before. And in, you know, 20 other cases, this crack was bad, uh, w w you know, was, was fine for five years, but then quickly deteriorated. And we can build up this model of quite large data sets that will continue to improve as Leak Vision collects more and more data. So operational, uh, sorry, opera <laughs> operationalizing Leak Vision. Uh, obviously, I'm, I've only been involved in gas for nine months. Uh, and so what's been a really important part of the process is taking regular consultations on the technology we're developing with the engineers and network operators who will actually use the product. Um, it's really vital that we learn from this kind of vastly experienced engineers. We chat to engineers that have been doing gas for 40 years, and many of them are quite cynical about new technology. Uh, so, you know, we that early adoption and bringing people along the journey with us is, I think, a really important part of this project. Um, by understanding the user cases, we can create a product that is of maximum use to the networks. So now I'll talk you through uh, 
what our current progress is and what future work we're looking to do. So uh, we're currently in the detailed design phase. Uh, we are also completing third party validation for cast iron mains and hydrogen deployment within here at the moment. We think this product's going to be really useful for hydrogen because natural gas leaking is one thing, hydrogen leaking is quite another. Um, and then following successful uh, testing and field trials, we aim to complete the project in March 2022 and uh, they will be available uh, in all good toy shops in time for Christmas. <laughs> So um, that's the end of my presentation. I think I've been a little bit over. Apologies. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you for listening.